Hi, this is the drag and draw program. This started out as a way of playing around with drawing lines and circles and whatnot on the canvas, uh, which turns out to be pretty easy. There's built-in JavaScript functions for drawing lines and circles. Um, but I found out right away that you can't just make a dot. There's no function for that. And the advice that I got online was to make a make just draw a line of a length of one or circle with a radius of one or 0.5 or whatever. And that, that worked okay, except for the fact that the the built-in functions are actually drawing between the dots, not on the dots. So it still wasn't exactly right. So I did a little bit more digging and found out you can actually get fairly low-level access to put values in pixel by pixel into the canvas. So I started playing with that, came up with ways of drawing lines, uh, came up with some fancier brushes, uh, started playing a lot with color, uh, color mixing. Uh, you know, I'd find, I'd say, well, it would be great if I could do this, uh, you know, maybe I should be able to do that, and so on and so forth. It's still bald, and now I've got a full-blown drawing program. So, you know, drawing's easy. You just pick a brush, uh, pick a color, and start scribbling on the screen. Um, but this program, the interface is uh, unique, and some of the functionality I put into it is unique. Uh, so it'd probably be in, uh, in your best interest to, to, for us to go over some of these things to, before you get started. Uh, so first of all, when you fire this up, you get these uh, four panels to start with. The uh, toolbar, which is fixed, stays, uh, starts out fixed, stays in the same place. You can turn that off and scroll it out of your way, but in the meantime, if you're lurking on a large canvas, then these things are always available for you. The uh, drawing board itself, uh, the palette, which is you know where all your colors are going to reside, and the uh, brush panel. That's you know that's what you need to get started drawing. Uh, other panels available, of course, are the color picker and sorter. This is this is where the colors are going to come from. This feeds the uh, palette. You pick the colors off the picker, you go into the sorter, and then you feed them into the palette. There's also a brush editor. Um, this is for making custom brushes. Uh, this is a lot of fun. This is a fulfilled a lot of childhood dreams. Uh, for one thing, being able to draw with multiple colors. We have the various brush types, and then they come in a, a variety of specific colors, so that you can put more than one up. Well, up to eight. Well, theoretically, nine colors um, into a single brush, um, and then right. Um, and then a background image. You can add a background image. This would be for uh, putting something behind everything. It uh, you could, I suppose, you could use it to trace a picture, or you could use it to see what your drawing is going to look like on top of some other picture. If say you're doing something transparent and it's going to, you're going to put this overlay this on something else. Um, all these panels have a, a hide top and bottom button. So if you uh, if you don't need it anymore, like this one, you just hide it. If uh, you got a panel, you know, and you want to see more of it, you just move it to the top. Obviously, um, you can move it to the bottom. Same with this to the top. See it all better. Move it to the bottom. And all these panels can be moved around. You can drag them by any any part of the any brown part of the panel, and, and most any of the uh, plates as well. Um, the, the only exception really is over here in the brushes because you can uh, arrange the brushes. So they you can't move with them because they'll you know, won't be able to move. You can change the uh, placards around. This is because you can custom make brushes. So if you want, if you make a bunch of brushes and you want to sort them in with other brush, similar brushes while you're working, um, you can do that. Um, if you want to move the canvas around, and you say move, move, you know, using a large one, or you just moved it so the title bar is out of the way, you can also move them by the canvas. I mean, you know, normally you'd want, you'd want it to draw, but if you hold down the control key, you can move the canvas around. So the same thing's true over here. The uh, brushes panel's got a test canvas for, for testing brushes. Um, use the control key, you can move it around. Uh, palette's also got a, a canvas for testing colors. Use the control key, you can move it around by that if you have to. Um, sorters, not, you know, also, you know, normally the, the you drag the boxes around. So you'd have to use the control key if you want to uh, move this around by anything but the, but the title bar. And obviously you can't move by buttons. That would get frustrating every time you click the button it wheel a little bit. Um, you can create a new picture. 
course. Uh, you can save your picture. We talked about that. You can load a picture, and um, you can add to a picture. So I've had a decent mouse. So double click, and now that's part of our picture. The um, and you can undo. The buttons over here, these ones, these are fun. This one returns everything to its original starting position. I already showed you this one a little bit. This changes the uh, toolbar from fixed to so you know it stays where it put wherever you put it. Move it around, it's still going to stay. Or you can make it unfixed so that it can you now scroll out of your way in case you in case you don't want it in your way. This so last little button here, this is a real fun one. This makes the uh, makes the panels transparent, so you can see under them. Um, but it's what I've done is I've found matching colors where the transparent color over white looks the same as the solid color. So if I were to hide this for a second, just make this dramatic. If I click this button, nothing happens. It, it looks like nothing's happened at all. But the fact is that it's actually made things transparent. So usually when you make something transparent, it gets fainter and harder to see. The more transparent you make it, the harder it is to see. But I found color. This color, this transparent color, looks the this color looks the same as the as the transparent color does with white behind it. So as you can see, you can make it uh, transparent so you can see through the panel, but it doesn't um, make it look any different. In fact, uh, I've got a brush that can uh, you can use to make more colors like that. Uh, it's 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 a feature. Um, also, if you uh, can't find a panel or you, you just can't get to the top buttons or whatever, double clicking on the button up here will bring it, turn it, clicking on it will turn it on, double clicking on it will make it uh, move to the top. So now we have our panels back that we, uh, we want to use. Um, if you click new and a couple other buttons, you will get this uh, confirm action dialog box. The way this works is I can either say yes or no at this point. Um, or if I don't want to go through the dialog box, I could just double click. So if I click and go, oh yeah, right now, just double click. And that gave me a new a new box. Alright, so colors and brushes. Let's 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 get that let's get that done. Uh, the brushes are um, are crazy. I mean it, 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 this is a, an, an edge brush. This is just a test brush, but it it, it doesn't color over and or colors over certain colors, so that um, you can end up with uh, you know making borders um, or even shadow effects. See, so you know I've got an edge on here; it'll it won't overwrite the the center color on this thing. And I got a, a shadow. If I picked better colors, that would look really dramatic. Um, but most of the time, you're probably just going to want to use a, a standard brush. And even then, you've got a lot of options. Um, line mode, just leave it in line mode. If you if you take it out of line mode, um, and you move around quickly, you'll just get dots. Uh, those are the, those are the actual events occurring. Um, this puts uh, connects the dots together, makes a nice smooth line. Drag and move is just dra there's there's two kinds of uh, move events in um, you know in, in web pages, the drag and the move event. And I like the drag better because you get more events. So you make for smoother lines, um, but move mode is good. Uh, for example, say for doing random, which is this button here, because if you stop and drag, it keeps firing, and so you end up with a, a dark spot in your line. Whereas with move, you get a move event along the moves. If you slow down, it doesn't make it much darker. If you go faster, it doesn't make much difference. And if you stop without releasing the mouse, you don't end up with a dark spot. Um, otherwise, you probably just want it in drag all the time. Uh, you can uh, normally you have foreground and background on. If you turn off the foreground, then it's only going to draw on the background. The background being defined by any part of the canvas that's still transparent or even transparent-ish. So you can then turn the uh, background off instead, and now it'll only draw on the foreground. <coughs> I'm still in random, so that's really handy. Uh, use that a lot. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You can't have you can't have them both off because uh, that'd be silly. Random is uh, 
I right, showed that a little bit of that. You can change that around. Depending on the size of the brush, you're going to want to change it around. Uh, bigger brushes are going to look darker no matter what, just because there are more pins to fire. So a bigger brush, uh, you know, it depends. You get a, you want to, if you're going for a chalk effect, you know, you may want a fairly low random, random value. Uh, over under force. Uh, talk about that in the brush tutorial. Uh, but you should be able to get started. The force. The, the only, the biggest use for that is you can pick blankish, and then um, and take it out of random, and then you can basically have an eraser. Normally, if you color with uh, a transparent color, it's just not going to do anything because everything everything keeps getting added. Um, so this forces whatever whatever color you pick. Um, even a transparent color so that uh, you know, if you put a transparent color it's going to overlay but if you want to turn an entire area into some new transparent color you can use the uh, the force mode. Rotate is a lot of fun. If we can get a brush down here that's uh, designed to test rotation and multiple colors. You get a flat brush and it's pretty, pretty smooth actually. If you can get a flat brush to be smooth like that then you got a pretty good, uh, pretty good rotator in my opinion. So that's uh, rotate. The uh, um, rotate is 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 really nice because uh, for brushes that have you know contours to them, something like that. You can use, uh, for example, this this is the arrow brush. If I were to pick, it's it's using assigned colors. So if I were to make this white. Or actually, uh, let's go with blankish. Rotate. Oh, and put the slider back to zero. Then this draws an arrow because it leaves a trail um, in the middle, but it uses blankish to block that out and has a little gap in it. Basically, leaves the trail, so you can have arrows. I don't know how useful it is, but it's a fun test brush to play with. Um, Rotate also can be halted if you use the Alt key. For example, let's uh, pick a uh, just a stock straight brush here. And you're rotating around. You can draw like that. But if you if you move the cursor around and then hold down the Alt key, now it stays in this position. So you can use the, this brush to get into corners. Rotate it the other way. Oops. Rotate it, and then hold down the Alt key and get into other corners. So gives you a uh, repositional brush. Also you can do something like, you know, you get this get this thing rotated where you want it and then you start drawing, you know, like calligraphy type of thing. It looks kind of like a pen or whatever. So it rotates fun to play with. Mix. There's two kinds of mix. Um, it starts out in blend mode, which essentially is the same math as uh, transparency. Uh, this is what most uh, drawing programs will do when they say they're mixing colors. They're really just blending them. Uh, let me go back to a standard brush here. Uh, and this is actually probably the more useful. It's it's more like um, what happens in nature. The um, oh yeah, that doesn't work on that. Um, you know, if you have two colors next to each other, they're gonna they're going to blend. They're not really going to mix like you like like paints. So this is um, you know what you're going to see more often. But I obviously what I actually put in here first and is more fun is um, mixing, which also doesn't work very well on this palette because that's just a single canvas. Uh, you need some layers to do that. So this is actually going to give you. Um, color mixing. So if I, uh, you know, take red and green, you know, it gets yellow and then you get the blue and uh, you get the RGB. And of course, I'm using uh, 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 RGB or, or HSL coloring. I'm not using RGB in, in an additive math. So if I take yellow, uh, pick yellow, and then mix that with uh, cyan and get the green and mix those with magenta and you get those colors and another thing that I thought was really important to me 
was remember when you were a kid and blue and yellow made green and you, you go to a, a color mixer and blue and yellow really makes black uh, I, I wanted it like it was like I remember when I was a kid you take the paints and you take a big yellow spot and you take blue and uh, I gotta get those to take there and you get you still get green in fact you can take any colors and that wouldn't shouldn't mix together according to regular additive or subtractive math and get uh, get a true color mix now what will work on this palette and one of the reasons is that there's a smear over here. This is the palette. This is what you hold in your hand and you, you get the colors off of your, your paintbrush. If you go in mix mode, and either, either mix or blend, and you click on rub, now it starts moving, the, dragging the colors around just like a paintbrush would. It's, it picks up the colors that are already in the picture and it starts mixing them together. Now besides looking cool, what this means is that you also get a lot of gradients between two colors. So if we open the sorter back up here for a second, let's uh, let's move this to the top. If you uh, hold down the shift key and pick here, you see that you get um, a lot of different uh, a lot of different shades um, between those colors. Um, so let me pick up, say, some, get some blue, red, green, and orange. So this is just like a, supposed to be just like a real palette. It's, it, it's like using electric paint, you know, it's, you, you smear things around and you discover colors. And then if you get, find some colors you like, just pick it. And uh, you can even pick any of the colors directly and then just start using them. Uh, of course, in mix mode, you're going to kind of messy. Another way of getting really good gradients really quickly is, is in fact to pick up some color and then just draw with it. You get all these gray, all these orange to reds in here. Uh, if you don't want that while you're mixing, of course you can also select this last brush and it's clean. So that cleans the brush off. It starts off um, clean every time. Without that, I draw this yellow. If I switch to orange, then I'm going to start getting color gradients between yellow and orange all right away. And they're so close together that it takes a while. So you get quite a quite a bunch of samples in the middle there. So that's uh, that's about it. You should be able to get started. Just pick some pick some brushes. The uh, make a separate video about the the brush editor, the uh, color picker. Um, but you know, because there's a lot more, um, but th this that's enough to get you started drawing. Uh, so, uh, good luck. Uh, enjoy.